Hello my lovely little butter mints, thank you for joining me for this deck unboxing today. It's been a while since I've done a deck unboxing so I'm feeling a little bit giddy. I got a little bit of a like resistance to doing it for a while. I know I've said to you guys before about having too many new things in my collection at once and like, liking to space things out but I do also like to do unboxings, I do like to do reviews, I do like to talk about decks. I think it always challenges me to think differently about Tarot and Oracle pretty much every time and introducing new imagery and stuff is very helpful for me. I do enjoy it. I know it's something that a lot of my audience does enjoy as well. So I try to keep that balance maintained. But with the depth year coming into effect and me kind of being on this very no buy and low buy kind of attitude, I, I found that the feeling of having to do unboxings or pushing myself to do unboxings and introducing new things was not good as it usually is. You know, usually it gives me a push out of my comfort zone and I like it. But with the depth year, I felt like I really wanted to avoid having anything new, even though I didn't buy these things. They are for review. And that's part of what I do for my job is to review decks, be involved with imagery, use new things in my practice with clientele and all that kind of thing. So there's been a little bit of a trying to find a delicate balance, I think, and I'm definitely coming back into that feeling that it's um, it's time for some unboxings. And the first deck that I'm going to be unboxing is this delightful French language deck, although there is actually no language involved in it. So I am diving back in today with this uh, delightful looking deck. I'm very excited about it because it's all symbolism and I love anything that's just symbolic, anything that's abstract, anything that asks me to really go there and kind of absorb myself into it and figure out how I feel about it you know so this is going to be a good one I'm just going to put my hands up right out of the gate and say that I do not speak French I may butcher certain things okay I'm going to attempt to say just a very sort of smattering of French words I'm not going to go crazy there are going to be a few French things that I have to say okay and I apologize in advance for the ear grating that will happen to any French speakers okay Katia sent the deck to me in this lovely organza bag organza bags are always appreciated I can never have too many so it's always nice to have another one to add to my collection I put all kinds of shit in them do you guys I put crystals in there I put jewelry in there god I do all sorts of things with these um, but this one is actually a really good one I think if you just want to um, take the cards out of the box and carry them around in an organza bag so I'm going to go in and you will see I do have teeny tiny hands I don't know if that comes across in my videos but my hands are teeny um, it certainly has been remarked upon by many a person and you will see that the deck is very suited to people with teeny tiny hands it would make a really good travel deck it's very discreet um, and it's just perfect for my hands I love it so much um, I did take a look at it I took a look at a couple of other videos a couple of other reviews or unboxings on this deck before agreeing to take it for review and one of the things that I really loved about it that I was excited to get into was just how small and compact the deck is but it does pack a powerful punch. It has 77 cards. And actually, the name of the deck is the 77. Now, if I actually look at it, I feel like the name of it is the 77 of Alias K, which I think Alias K is like Katia's create creative name but I don't know for sure I feel like that's what's happening because when Katia signs off her email she signs off Katia then she puts um bisou the kisses then she puts uh, alias k so I don't know if that is I mean alias reminds me of the word alias so I don't know if maybe I'm just getting confused because obviously an alias is a different name a false name one that you might use for creative purposes so I don't know if I'm just getting something a bit skew if here but essentially I think it is the 77 of Alias K or by Alias K so it's Le 77 d'Alias K I think that that is what is happening here I don't know I'm going to call it the 77 <laughs> that's what I'm going to call this oracle deck um, because I feel like obviously the whole title the 77 of Alias K or by Alias K I think that's probably a little bit too much of a mouthful I think it's just called the 77 and on the back it says <laughs> Divination par l'oracle. Or or How would you say oracle in French? I really should have looked this shit up. Divination. Divinish Guys, get at me down below and tell me how bad I butchered it on a scale of 1 to you fucked it raw. Divination par l'oracle composé de 77 symboles. No, that was horrible. Oh god, my face is fucking melting. I'm so sorry. I'm so so sorry. I think what that means is a divination oracle comprised of 77 symbols. So if you're watching this and thinking, 
this is not going to apply to me because I'm not French. I have to say now, the cards are just beautiful pictorial compositions that encourage you to look at them, get immersed in them and interpret them for yourself. And they join together, you know, like, um, like Prisma Visions does. It all joins together. So I'm very excited to have a look into this. And I apologise again for the terrible, terrible uh, use of French there. And here I've got the card that goes with it. It's got the Alias K email address there, and it says, <laughs> once again, I deeply apologise. Uh, je suis désolé. <laughs> je suis très désolé. <laughs> it says, un le, no, un, un, or un, un lien s'écrit en secret. And that means the links are created in secret. Boom! <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> no one's more upset with myself right now than I am, okay? Just letting you know, just letting you know. <laughs> Going back to my French lessons now at school. Ça va? Oui, ça va très bien, merci. Et toi? Oh, it's such a sexy language. I need to pick some of that shit up. I need to get more of that in my brain box. I'm brushing up on German at the moment because I'm going to Berlin in August. <laughs> First German, then French. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go for the German first, then the French, then I'm on to the Italian, then I'm on to the Spanish. <laughs> I love all the European languages. I just don't seem to have the time to learn them all. Um, so, la 77 d'Aliasque. Let's do this. I'm going to open the box now. Blimey, the box is nice and like sturdy cardboard. Okay, I really like this burgundy on the box as well. Um, I feel like boxes, you know what, my decks are going to last me a lifetime. I want them to be with me a long time. I want to keep working with them. So I always accept that the box is going to be a casualty of time spent with the deck, shuffling the deck, playing with the deck. Um, but I must say, all in all, very nice box. That's not going to fall apart on you in a, in a minute. You know, it's going to be a while before that one starts to get a little bit haggard, depending how much you use it. Okay, so here is the little book, which obviously is all en français so I cannot read it <laughs> um, okay let me have a look if I can understand some of it though you know it's kind of it's kind of uh, easy enough to understand amour sentiment forte et partage <laughs> oh good goddess I know that it is probably likely that there is an English translation of this, probably on the internet somewhere. I can't imagine that Katia wouldn't have thought of that. Um, but I cannot seem to find it. No, I really can't seem to see a link to an English translation, but I feel fairly certain that there must be one. Essentially, in the little white book, there is a number for each of the cards, and there's literally just four or five words each to describe what kinds of things the creator was thinking about when the symbol was made. Um, so you're still very much being encouraged to go on your own journey with each of the symbols and think about what it means to you, but there is some reference there for what it means to the creator and what was intended. The only problem is it's in French for me right now. I do think that there is an English version. I will definitely leave in the down bar a link to the English version should I chance to find it. Okay, so here is the 77 card deck, a very hefty amount of cards to play with, which is something that does excite me. It's one shy of the amount in a standard tarot deck. So I feel like just because it's compact doesn't mean that you compromise on the amount of symbolism and the amount of inspiration that you've got to work with, which is cool. These are the backings. You've got, again, this beautiful burgundy and the gold, and you've got Alias K written down there, and then the symbol here. The cardstock doesn't feel bad at all, you know? I mean, I would say it's playing card stock, but it's good playing card stock, if that makes any sense. It's uh, robust. I'm going to take a look at the individual images first, and then I'm going to put a few rows of images together so we can see what actually happens when we put some of these cards side by side, um, because that's when they actually form a pattern. They kind of merge into each other. So this is uh, going to be an interesting journey. Each of the drawn images for the deck is in gold with a gold border as well. And then you've got this really deep, very sumptuous blue in the background. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start leaning in and seeing what I can see. So immediately I'm really drawn in by the second card in the deck, which as you can see is a, a baby, and the baby's turned upside down, ready to be born. So that's definitely an exciting and powerful symbol, I think, and that's something that I really, 
can work with. Card number three is this meeting, this imminent meeting of two people, but it also looks like there's a meeting of their spirits happening as well. I feel like the physical bodies are stood back from each other, facing each other, but you've also got these beautiful sort of symbols um, on the inside that look almost very um, ethereal, very smoke-like in a way. And so I feel like it's almost about the physical bodies and the cognitive mind meeting, but it's also about the spirit meeting and it's about something deeper happening, which I really like. I really like symbol number four. Um, immediately I'm thinking about wedding rings, which is weird because I don't personally have any uh, have any view on getting married myself, but obviously it is something that I suppose um, you couldn't blame me for immediately thinking. The rings of different sizes um, locked together kind of thing. Obviously there's a Venn diagram there and I really do like a Venn diagram. I like the idea of that bit in the middle where different aspects of each separate thing combine into a unity. So there's that as well. Um, and I even see some kind of a twisted sort of tree branch or something like that. Um, something existing in nature that looks very harmonious and very deliberate, but is actually quite by accident. So that's what that makes me think of. I really enjoy card number five. I feel like this is lovers kissing. It's also swans kissing, their beaks touching. Um, you've got that heart in the middle. This is uh, really beautiful. And actually, it feels like there's a couple inside that's crafted out of the dark blue. So first of all, the gold sort of parts on the outline seem to represent two human heads and then in the middle you've actually got two smaller people that seem to be I don't know sleeping in a bed or something like that which is interesting because you can kind of see the outline of one of their faces so um, yeah I'm getting a little bit of a vibe of the um, Hidden Waters tarot deck now you know the Rorschach test deck I'm feeling like wow if I look into some of these I can see different things depending on how I'm looking which is funny because card number six immediately made me think of a rather buxom pair of mammaries <laughs> that was the first thing I thought of I'm sorry, <laughs> just we désolé again. So when I consult the very French little white book for this particular card, card number five, it says amour, which means love. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I know what that means. Um, and then for the next part, which says sentiments for sentiment, sentiment, I don't know, sentiment for a partagé, um, it says strong feelings and sharing on Google Translate. And uh, that's a really interesting one. I feel like there's so much to this particular uh, card. It also looks like kind of a map from the air with the road going round. Um, and it also looks like there's a figure standing on a piece of land which I think could represent... Um, the end of land and the beginning of sea. There's a lot to unpack there, I think. Card number 10 is just literally a straight horizontal line, which I think would definitely give something to any composition of cards, you know, that are linking end to end with each other. I think that would definitely draw your eye to it, that completely horizontal line. There's no other flourishes. There's nothing that looks more like brush strokes because a lot of these cards are very brush strokey. Um, but card number 10 is just so minimal and so striking for that reason so I definitely uh, I definitely like that one a lot and then card number 12 is this broken line it kind of reminds me of a diagram of um, a sort of electric circuit where you know you've got the link broken so the electricity is not going through kind of thing and it also reminds me of something having been cut so again I think that would really draw my eye to it in a reading as well there's a really beautiful spiral in card number 16 and I do like a spiral I think a lot of us can agree on on that, that that sometimes a spiral is a good thing to see when you're consulting the cards or you know looking for symbols that might help you to relate to how you're feeling about something and I think that there's the word moi in the middle m-o-i is what that looks like to me so you've actually got an arrow pointing you to pointing you in the direction to go around into the center of the spiral and then in the middle you find yourself so that's definitely an exciting image I do like the inclusion of a guitar for card number 18 that's a beautiful thing to see it makes me think of creativity it makes me think of expression it makes me think of authenticity it makes me think of relaxation and fun um, community as well could be a part of it so definitely a lot of different things you could unpack and play with there cards number 23 and 24 are just exhibiting the plain block deep blue color and then the completely plain gold color uh, this again I think would draw my eye to it it would give me a pause for reflection it seems like it's welcoming me into an empty space 
for deeper explorations that don't really come from the imagery but that come from maybe my own sense of what uh, a querent's needs might be or what what my needs might be depending on who I'm reading for so I definitely enjoy that I definitely think that's worth um, playing with more uh, it might be uncomfortable I think if these block cards come up in a reading maybe it, I would feel like they were obscuring something that I needed to see but I think that might be part of the point of it is that I'm supposed to then look past those blocks of colour and actually see into um, the the composition to discover for myself what is behind those colours that seem to be obscuring something so again I think it gives me a free space to decide what I think ought to be there or what is coming through for me oh I really really like the inclusion of a pair of scissors here for card number 27 that's very striking that's very high impact I do enjoy that one card number 28 is a very very cute picture of what looks like a bed with a rug on the floor underneath that looks like it's got I don't know a ni nice pattern on it or a map of the world and even though these are very simplistic line drawings and they are intended to be abstract they're intended to be for you to kind of flesh out in your mind I still get the sense that this is a very homely situation this is something very comfortable very domestic it's a safe space it might be a space where you can really get in touch with your inner child kind of thing so that's what's coming through for me there oh I love card number 32 this is very sort of deep meditation deep contemplation devotion spirituality this figure is definitely getting down with the crown and by crown i do mean crown chakra darling card number 33 is a burning candle and i think that's a really awesome image to see in this deck that's definitely going to provide illumination pun intended card number 35 is an ear actually kind of absorbing sound waves coming towards it is what it looks like to me which is uh, another really great thing to see and you can definitely take that as being about, you know, listening to what someone else has to say, taking on other perspectives, but also listening to yourself. And I think also just paying attention to your senses, enjoying the feeling of being in your body and being in your senses and paying attention to the messages that are going on all around you and what might actually be available to you when you head into magician's mindset, which in my mind is just the mindset where you decide that any given thing could be trying to show you something, teach you a lesson, provide you with an insight. Uh, the very next person you come across could be a guru to you. The very next thing you see in the street or over here in the street could be a uh, divine guide for you so to me it's kind of a magician mindset thing it's like saying switch on your ability to understand that the universe could be talking to you in straight sentences at any given moment card number 37 looks to be a telephone but it could also definitely be some kind of bag or briefcase or safe those are the two things that I'm seeing so I'm going to consult once again the uh, little white very French book um, for card number 37 so the keywords for this card are gift, box, reward, beautiful surprise, um, a chest of some kind. So yeah, it's definitely about receiving something, enjoying the anticipation of what this something is going to be and what is going to come out of it. So that's very cool. I don't know why, but I saw an old Bakelite phone, you know, I think it's just because of that swirly bit in the middle that reminded me of the, uh, the kind of thing where you tap the numbers in and it just looked very bulky and very phone-like. But then of course, I suppose, why would it be so squirrely? square on the bottom but I think the idea with this deck is that you are supposed to see what you see and the fact that you see what you see gives it meaning so there's no wrong answer having said that though I think card number 38 is quite unmistakably a syringe and I really like that it kind of gives me a vibe of the devil card in the bohemian gothic tarot obviously these are completely different decks but the presence of a syringe um, always makes me cringe no 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 that's just a rhyme that I just had to do because it was an impulse um, yeah the presence of a syringe I think is always a very full-on image of addiction um, and of course it's very confronting it is very subversive and some people might not even agree with it um, but but to me you know it does it does do something to me there's also a syringe in the zombie tarot but I can't remember which card now 10 points to whoever can remember that though card number 40 is a hand offering a rose which is very beautiful very lovely to see um, that's got some really romantic sentiments and 
yeah it's just very soothing that particular image I think. Card number 45 is gorgeous you can see there the outline of the body and the outline of the hair there is something very um, evocative about that that would definitely draw my eye to it and it, it definitely lends uh, lends itself a lot to the overall premise of the deck. Oh and then in card 46 you've got this um, sort of uh, a stronger jawline and the outline of a different kind of face and um, yeah you've got those uh, the beautiful line there depicting the uh, curvature in the in the throat where the chest plate is gorgeous really lovely oh my god guys there's a fucking euro symbol in this deck it's the symbol of a euro <laughs> take us back europe christ on a banana oh that's so heartwarming and obviously it's a symbol of money it's a symbol of you know um prosperity and stability material stability and immediately right off the bat that's going to be very obvious to a french person because they use euros um, but it's also very obvious to me because i frequently have to use euros when i go abroad and stuff and no, no, I love Europe, me. Oh, I really love this prison door. And I love the, you know, very sort of um, geometric lines coming out of it. It's, um, yeah, there's a lot of impact there. That's a really good card. Mm. A change of my camera battery and a quick sip of Twining's Buttermint Tea. Do yourselves a favour. It's bloody gorgeous. Mm. Non-spawn, darling. Non-spawn forever. I don't think I'm ever going to get big enough for Twinings to come a knocking. So I've come across a card that does have some French words in it, and it was really interesting to go on a little journey to figure out what this actually means. Um, again, je suis désolé for my butchering of the French language, but it says savoir et connaissance, or connaissance. I never know if you fucking pronounce the last bit or not. Um, let me know how badly I butchered it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I want all the Fre I want all the fucking team French speakers down in the comments. I want you Canadian bitches. I want you actual French bitches, and I want any other bitches that speak of le français. Okay, to tell me how badly this is sucking right now for you. Um, okay, so basically, savoir et connaissance means is that how you say it? Sans, 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 sans. Um, means basically understanding it means knowledge and understanding or knowledge versus understanding so it's about understanding being deeper and more experienced base based than mere knowledge the reason that I got it so confused was because when I put it through Google Translate savoir meant knowledge in English but connaissance also meant knowledge in English so I was like it means knowledge and knowledge or what I don't understand but apparently it means one kind of knowledge and another. So the first word means knowledge and the second card means understanding. So it's deeper than merely knowing it. It's actually getting it kind of thing. Now, that's the kind of thing that we should just rip off and have in English as well. A little like neat thing that means you know, but then you know. But then I suppose for us it would be knowledge versus wisdom, I think, would be the the way that you would explain it. Um, but you know what? I think that... For me, I'm so in my comfort zone as an English speaker and I need to get out of my comfort zone as an English speaker and I do try to wherever I can. I do like collecting little bits and pieces of other languages and whatnot, but essentially other languages are not really a part of my reality that much um, and so and they don't have to be so I think it's really important to own a deck that ha actually has made me have to look up something immediately in order to actually understand it remotely so I think that's a good thing. <gasps> card number 60 is this amazing like fantasia style 90s throwback moon which i love i mean to be honest when the 90s had it it was a throwback to sort of a more victorian style but in any event doesn't matter the moon the moon is out in force in this card we have the french words for yes and no we oui and non so that's good good to see i like that a lot it does give it a bit of a continental flavor having the words in french instead of english i do like that Ooh, you've got this one card in the deck that's got some burgundy in it that's really interesting and very striking and quite jarring because it's so different to the rest of the deck uh, undeniably that really does draw your attention to it which is great Oh, I love card number 76 with the sort of um, very bare tree and the cragged mountains, really thinking about what nature can survive and what we need to survive. And then card number 77 has also got some burgundy in it. There's this strip of burgundy in the centre, which again, just draws the eye to it. So there we go. I've had a little look through this deck. I'm, I really enjoyed looking through it. It's very different. Like I said, it's very compact, which I like. And it gives me that opportunity to think about what I think the images mean and 
and get into the more abstract way of reading. Um, I'm now going to um, show you guys what happens when you link these cards together in rows and see what kinds of things we can make. I'm probably not going to film that at the same time as this because I've got someone coming over in a moment but it will be um, the next clip that you see. I'll be on the floor somewhere playing with things, playing with the cards so if you need to grab a beverage or have a break this would be a good time to do it because we're now going to switch to another camera angle and have a look at what happens when you put these babies together. Well, honey bunnies, thank you so much for watching my unboxing of the 77 Oracle by Alias K. This has been really awesome to see, very interesting. I'm going to leave all the relevant links down below and I'll see you in the next video. Much love, guys. Blessed be.